Hello, this is David from DN Cognitive Counseling. Tonight I want to talk about apologies. A lot of times people say, say you're sorry. And people say, I'm sorry. And they think that they've apologized. What they don't understand is saying sorry doesn't make it right. Now I realize that was a song from the 80s, but it's also true. The words I'm sorry don't have any meaning without some work going behind it. In recovery, the concept of making amends is what's important in the sorry. Now, the fact is that most people say, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry I misinterpreted. I'm sorry with a caveat to explain why they did what they did. So when a person does that, what they're really doing is, I'm sorry, but really, there was a reason why I did what I did, and therefore my sorriness has less of a meaning because of it, which then is not really sorry. And too many times people do not take responsibility for the actual mistakes they make. The problem is never the mistake. The problem is the cover-up. The problem is the belief that it's okay to continue doing the same thing. I've helped many people change many aspects of their life through the years. And some of them have done some really horrific things. But that did not make them horrific people. The ability to learn from the mistakes, the ability to learn from what they did wrong, helped them to grow. So the first thing that you have to do in any sort of apology is you first have to acknowledge what you actually did that was wrong. Not, I'm sorry you felt that way. Not, I'm sorry you thought I did. But actually acknowledging the wrong. Too many times you'll hear people, people apologize with those caveats and listen for them because it shows you that they're not really sorry. Politicians are beautiful at making these. And so are many celebrities. I'm sorry I let my fans down. But the sorriness for the actual event, very little words about. So acknowledging what the wrong is, is key to the uh, being able to apologize. What it is that I did that was wrong. The next thing in any apology, you have to be sincere. An apology that just gives lip service, words, I'm sorry I got caught, I'm sorry that I'm in trouble, it doesn't have any meaning. Again, it's about getting away with something and not that they're really sorry. One of the reasons why people don't want to accept an apology is they don't believe that the apology is really sincere. They believe it's forced, that it has to be said. Therefore, the person saying it to prevent other damaging things from happening. Which is the reason why a lot of people go to court and they tell the judge how sorry they are and they read their written statement. And most people who are reading those statements, they're not really sorry, they're doing it because they're in trouble and they're hoping that the judge will find leniency if they can make a good enough presentation. And that's why when they give those uh, readings, most of the time they're very nervous. Am I going to do this good enough? And is my performance going to get the result that I want? But when you are sincere in your apology, you don't care about the end result. You want to give that apology. But the fact is we live in a culture today where people are constantly giving insincere apologies just to say, stop the consequences. In fact, you'll hear a lot of people in the media constantly talk about what we should do or shouldn't do in terms of consequences without recognizing what was done wrong and its sincereness. The third thing that you want is that you want for the person that you hurt to actually be asked for forgiveness. It's not enough to say, I'm really, really sorry. I really want to tell you how much I'm sorry about this. But it's very important when you're giving that apology that you ask that person to forgive what you've done. And what's important about that is acknowledging that you're waiting for that person to give you an answer. 
Now, sometimes that person is going to say, no, I don't forgive you. And that's okay. There's a famous story that a Father Martin tells um, in, in a number of AA meetings about a man who had this beautiful way of speaking. And he worked at this firm, and he was going from floor to floor asking for forgiveness. And he was going along, having a good old time, and talking about this. And he went ahead to floor to floor, t saying to them what had happened to him, what he did, and how he was sorry, and asking for forgiveness. And he got to this one person's office, and the person heard his plea for forgiveness. And he said, I, you were a bad person then, you are a bad person now, get out of my office, I'm not forgiving you. The guy got up and was angry, and he went to the, go to the elevator to leave the building. And he was going to the elevator, and he was angry and frustrated. And then it hit him. That man did not have to accept my apology. I had to give it. In that moment, he forgot about all the forgiveness he got from all those other people. His emotions get in the way, and he can't see that fact. So asking for forgiveness is very important, and it makes you very vulnerable. But it's very important when you, are, when you hurt somebody else that you ask them for that forgiveness. And it's very important not to look at it as, yes, they forgave me, or no, they didn't. Because the work isn't done that way. You're not finished with the work just because they forgave you. And again, it's very important when you're asking that or you're asking for forgiveness that you don't have a caveat in that saying, well, the reason why it happened was because of what you did. If only you wouldn't have done that, then this would never have happened. Because then again, that goes away from the forgiveness again. You have to be also willing to allow people time to be able to see that you've actually really are sincere in your apology. Sometimes people say, nah, you're just full of it. I don't really even believe you. You're not really sorry. And the best way of dealing with that is to ask for forgiveness multiple times. It's okay to ask multiple times for forgiveness. It's okay to be able to say a couple of times. Now, not, you don't want to do it like over and over again the same day, but come back to them a different time. And Another aspect to add into that forgiveness is to say to the person, how will it be different? This is how I will change. This is how I will become a different person. And that's why somebody who's gone through recovery and somebody who has gone through those steps and somebody who asks for forgiveness the right way is no longer the same person that would do the same thing to you over and over again. Being able to ask for, for that forgiveness and then saying, this is how I would have done it differently. This is what I need to change. Too many times people want the forgiveness without doing any of the work. They just say, forgive me. And you're supposed to say, okay. And then you get hurt again and again and again. That doesn't help you. That doesn't help them. So you want to see how forgiveness works, and you want to be able to see that change is the ultimate goal for being able to be forgiven. Now, I hope that you found this video helpful. If I said anything in this video that you disagree with or you want to comment on or you have a question, please comment below. If you liked the video, please hit like. If you disliked it, please tell me why. If you have a question, please ask. And again, if you didn't hit subscribe, and you'd like to hit subscribe, please do. And if you want to become a patron to this channel, hit the button below for the subscribe star. And we very much support, we accept your support. Thank you very much. And have a good night and good mental health.